Before we jump into the beginning, I want to just introduce a dear friend and colleague of mine, Carola Rubia. Carola is the wisdom behind all of the years of, uh, of uh, effort that we've put into before Impact Transfer and now Scaling Solutions. Carola, could you just say a, a few words to get us started, please? Hi, Anthony. Hello, everyone. I don't know if you are able to see me, but those cannot see me. Um, I uh, white skin, wearing uh, light blue uh, glasses. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, as Anthony mentioned, uh, we discovered me um, as seen a zero project scaling solution as a great opportunity uh, because of all the know-how tools and knowledge that can uh, be addressed to organizations like us. Uh, we know and we understand the challenge that you are going through. And we do believe that with this type of support, you will be able to do much more thing, things and also uh, probably to develop and decide to take new challenges. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. And muchísimas gracias para aquellos que hablan español. Y cualquier cosa, estamos a su Thank you for everyone who speaks Spanish, and we are at your service. Thank you so much, Carola. And we're going to have a little bit of an announcement at the end of today's webinar, dealing with another initiative that you're spearheading, Zero Project Latin America, which I'm really excited about, and I think you guys are going to be really excited about, too. So we are going to jump in now. Uh, we're going to jump in with the webinar. So today we're going to be talking about the five things that experts can uh, experts do to showcase their company or their organization or their initiatives value. I'm going to talk a lot about company and business speak, but this goes for anyone who is trying to make change in the world around them, whether that's an innovation, a social innovation, a social enterprise, or just an initiative that's trying to do good. Give me one second, having a little bit of technical difficulties here. All right, um, five things that we can do, experts do. They're gonna start off with this list of five things. I'm gonna showcase some of the reasons why this is gonna help you um, move your business, your organization, your initiative forward. And then we're gonna talk about Zero Projects Scaling Solutions Program which is all about taking initiatives like yours and bringing them to new audiences around the world. So today I'm gonna to show you what your initiative could look like in one year. So this time in 2025, you could be looking at a whole new opportunity for your work and for creating impact. And I can say this unequivocally because I've seen it in action. A few weeks ago at Zero Project 2024, the conference there in Vienna, I had the privilege to support an organization called Reach and Match, which is based in Australia. And they do work on inclusive education. And they've come up with a non-tech solution for incorporating and including people with disabilities in the classroom. And that picture there is of Mandy Lau presenting at the Austrian Parliament. So you could imagine what it would take to bring a startup from Australia all the way to Vienna and give her a platform like the Australian Parliament to create the impact that she believes in. And she didn't just speak before the Australian Parliament, she also brokered a deal with schools in Austria to be able to use her reach and match product, which is really, really exciting. So when I say this could be you next year, I mean it unequivocally because this could be your initiative. This could be the platform for your initiative. And we have other opportunities for you to grow and to create new, uh, new, uh, new growth for your organization, for your initiative. And here's a great example of one of our Scaling Solutions alumni. Uh, they say that they have a renewed heart they were full of hope that the guidance that we provided was invaluable, that the knowledge we provided was so much of uh, created so much support, and that they, we fostered a sense of unity and camaraderie amongst all the Scaling Solutions fellows. And they thanked us for their support, care, and genuine warmth. So these are the kinds of testimonials that we have to give to offer to showcase 
what you could do with us as part of scaling solutions. We're going to get a little bit more into that later, but for now, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Anthony Giannoumis. I've been involved in Zero Project, disability rights, social innovation for 25 plus years. Uh, it's been a joy for me to see all the opportunities that have started in a very small grassroots way flourish and emerge over the years that I've been able to work on these, uh, on these sort of initiatives. I run my own company here in Oslo, Norway. I say that I'm American by birth, Norwegian by choice. And so I've been running my company here in Oslo for the past three years with my co-founder, Anne. I'll introduce Anne and my other uh, colleague, Regant, later on in this presentation. And I'm a lifetime diversity and inclusion advocate. I started my career as a computer programmer. I made my way to a career as an opera singer, believe it or not. And then I worked in uh, academia for several years as a professor. And now I get to do this work, bringing uh, new life to initiatives around the world focused on disability and inclusion. So I think a lot of us understand that social innovation is all about creating value. It's all about what's called value proposition and business speak, which basically means you gotta be able to showcase what you can do that might be a little bit different than anybody else who's on the market. And I think a lot of us, most of us, I think even go as far as to say all of us believe in the disability rights mantra of nothing about us without us. And all that comes down to is that we shouldn't be creating new initiatives that involve people with disabilities without having them as part of that initiative at the heart of that initiative. And I think we all can get around this idea that new innovations are necessary for some, are often necessary for people with disabilities, but they can be beneficial for or as I like to say, they can be awesome for everyone. And we have so many examples of innovations that started out as a disability specific initiative and then were later adopted by everyone because it worked so well. What I think we miss, what I think is left out of this equation is that showcasing your value, showcasing the value of what you're doing is absolutely essential for standing out in a field of competitors or even in a field of potential substitutes for what you're doing. And what that will help you do by being able to articulate clearly the value that you're creating, it'll help you minimize any risk of being a niche obscurity now, a lot of us are operating in very small market niche, and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that we have to relegate ourselves to obscurity. We can serve a market niche while at the same time elevating our presence globally. It'll also help you maintain the engagement of your customers, of your clients, of your stakeholders, of just about anyone who has an interest in the work that you are doing, and it'll help you maximize any opportunities that, there, that exist to scale your work into new markets around the world. Now, you might be thinking, sure, Anthony, all that sounds fantastic, but you know what? I've been in this game for a little while. I know my value proposition, and you're absolutely right. You should know your value proposition. I'm not suggesting that that's the end game, but that's the starting point for scaling your initiatives worldwide. Now, I don't know how you've had your experiences over time with uh, the work that you're doing. I've struggled a lot being able to communicate to friends and family members what I do in a way that they understand. And often what ends up happening, whether it was during my career as an academic or now as my career as an entrepreneur, I'll start talking excitedly about this, that, or the other thing. And then they'll just slowly, the eyes kind of, eyelids start to lower and you see that you're just, they grow distant. And, I, and you try to pull them back in, but no, this is really important because of this reason, this reason, and this reason, and they're still just completely disconnected. It can be a struggle. I don't know if you've had that experience, but that happens to me all the time. Being able to clearly articulate my value, the value that I create, not only helps you engage your friends and family members, it also helps you deal with these so-called quote unquote devil's advocates. And I know this isn't necessarily a term that is international. So I'll explain it in English. The way it works is you might want to do something really cool and you might bring up, hey, I want to do 
this because I think it's really important. And then someone raises their hand and says, well, uh, I just want to be a devil's advocate and actually argue for the opposite of whatever you have said. And they're not doing it because they necessarily believe that the, the opposite is true, but just because they want to kind of poke and prod you, they just want to be a little bit contrarian. So we have to be able to articulate our values so that when those devil's advocates enter the room and start to criticize us, that we can showcase why our work is meaningful. And of course, we have to convince our friends and family that we're not just spending our life frittering it away on something that may not create the impact that we want. We've got to showcase our value so that we can show those people in our lives who we care about how the work that we're doing is meaningful. And of course, that extends to the entire world. We have to be able to showcase on platforms that connect with people around the world how we are creating impact. And so my top five ways that we can create, we can showcase our value starts with showcasing your unfair advantage. And all this comes down to is whatever your unique value proposition is, whatever the one thing that you're doing that's different or somehow better or improved upon anything that's ever come to pass. Because the challenge that we're facing is that Everyone is more or less doing everything, no matter how unique we might think we, uh, we are, there's probably someone out there doing something similar. And so we always have to strive to showcase how we're doing things a little bit different and really get into the salient characteristics, the important characteristics of our work. And so one of the things that we've been working on the last year is on inclusive education. But there are thousands of inclusive education initiatives around the world. There are thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of new technologies that are intended to empower people with disabilities. And there are a whole host of employment initiatives that are intended to bring people with disabilities into employment. I'm, I'm asking or I'm provoking you to think about what it is that yours, your initiative does that's a little bit different than everyone else's. And you not only have to communicate your difference in technical speak and babble, you also have to be able to communicate it in a way that's understandable. So I always say you should be able to explain your unfair advantage in 12 words or less for a 12 year old. If you can do that, then you've clearly connected your work to different audiences. The other thing I kind of I try to approach this unique uh, this unique and unfair advantage with is understanding what are my personal or company or initiative achievements, how that relates to the skills that we have in our organization or that we have personally, and then how that relates to the third part, our mission. So if we can define a red thread between our achievements, our skills and our purpose, there's where the unfair advantage often lies. And again, if you can communicate that to your audiences in 12 words or less for a 12 year old, then suddenly you've got something that you can very clearly use to convince people that you have something that is meaningful and creating value. When I first started my work as a entrepreneur, one of the things I wanted to get into were workshops on inclusion. Now, the problem is the field of inclusion is full of people running workshops. They run all kinds of workshops about anti-bias and they run workshops about accessibility and they work, run workshops about inclusion and everything else. And so I had to think really hard and work with experts from around the world to come up with something that is unique enough that I could sell it to a company or a corporate uh, organization that they would want to buy it, something unique enough that they would see the value in what I was doing. And what we came up with, myself and some experts and uh, colleagues down in Brussels, Belgium, what we came up with was what we call the inclusion game. So we took more or less the standard inclusion training, anti-bias and all these other issues that are important in inclusion and accessibility included in that, and we made it into a game that teams can play with each other. 
And suddenly that changed the script, it changed the narrative, because no longer were there people sitting in their chairs, passively listening to someone talk about how important inclusion is. They had someone like me up on stage with my co my co-facilitator saying, we're going to play a game today, and here's how the game works. And suddenly everybody's engaged and they're off. They've put away their phones and they're paying attention and they're really in the zone. So this is what I'm talking about when I mean your unfair advantage. What's the one little thing you're doing that's different than what other people in your area are doing? I also have a book I recently published called The Sins and Wins of Inclusive Leadership. Now, you might be thinking, Anthony, oh, it's just another leadership book, or it's just another book about inclusion. And you're absolutely right. It is just another book about leadership and about inclusion. But it's also fully illustrated. And I'm willing to bet that there's not a book out there on leadership and inclusion, or what I call inclusive leadership, that is fully illustrated. And so we call it a children's book for CEOs. So that's where we can get into the niche that's where we can get into the value of what we're doing in our unfair advantage. Let's get into number two here. Number two is share your success stories. And this might seem easy. Okay, well, all I got to do is get into this thing called social proof. So somebody saying that what we did worked. And I showed, I kind of did an example of that at the beginning of this webinar when I talked about Mandy and Reach and Match and their work in Vienna. And then I talked about uh, the other colleague at Scaling Solutions who was so proud of the work that they were doing with us. This is just about showcasing the stories that people tell when they're talking about the work that you're doing and how good it is. So whose life have you changed? Whose life started at A and went to B because of your initiative? Now, once you know that, elevate that, bring that into the public discussion, because those that movement from A to B, and often it's an emotional movement. If you noticed from the testimonial at the beginning of this webinar, there were a lot of emotions wrapped up in that testimonial, things like hope, things like care. These are all things that matter to people and people will connect to whenever they're looking at your success story. So what is that story behind all of that work? So I mentioned Mandy at the beginning. I'll mention two other folks who I got to work with in this last year in the Scaling Solutions program. One is a man named Ayushman, and Ayushman runs a company that uh, is doing really, really amazing work with uh, accessible keyboards for mobile devices. They have a company called Hable One. And he told me after dinner one day, he said, Anthony, being part of Scaling Solutions has saved us years of research and development. Now, that's a great success story because you can clearly say there was a point A and a point B. There was a point A before Scaling Solutions where Ayushman was going to struggle with being able to do the research and development that he knows he needed to do to get his product out into the, uh, into the market. And then there's a point B afterwards and scaling solutions saved him that time. So it's an amazing success story. The other one I'll point out is a woman named Ignacia who's from Chile and she runs an inclusive education program there in Chile. And her and I would talk over a breakfast uh, when we were both at Vienna a few weeks ago. And it was such a nice connection to make because it was just those, you know, kind of informal chats, those relaxed chats you have over a cup of coffee. And I learned a lot about her work and it helped inspire me to go back to the drawing board of what scaling solutions is meant to be and rework some of the aspects so that we can improve upon it. So for me, that was a success story in learning. There was a before and then there was an after and there was a journey that happened during that. So being able to showcase your success stories really matters to showcasing your value. Number three, become a thought leader. Now, I hate the term thought leader. It drives me crazy because I think everybody these days is a thought leader. I think there are, you know, uh, it doesn't matter your age or anything else. You're, you, you know, you can put yourself out there on social media as a thought leader. But I think there's an important set of skills behind thought leadership that I think are necessary for showcasing your value. So this has to do with the topics the issues or the ideas that you are um, 
that you're working with and that you're working in. It doesn't mean that you have to have a multiple PhDs and a Nobel Prize in whatever the field is. It only means that you have to be working in an area and have some knowledge about it. That's enough to position yourself as a thought leader. And it doesn't mean that there's not other people who are also thought leaders in your field. It only means that there is space for everyone to have their voice and have their ideas put out there. And a lot of the times you're going to have to select whatever that topic might be and put it on repeat. Every time you're posting to social media, you're going to have to put that same idea back out there. And you might even repeat yourself word for word at times. Every time you talk to a potential client or customer or investor, you're going to have to put that same dialogue on repeat to get it into their heads. This is the area that I am leading. You can also just take on any kind of trend that is occurring in the media. So I love going to ChatGPT and just telling ChatGPT, hey, uh, what's the trends today? What's trending on social media? And it'll say, oh, well, these are the five topics that everybody seemed to be talking about. And I'll sit there and I'll spend some time and I'll reflect, how does my work relate to those topics? We just had last week International Women's Day. So that was an easy connection for me to make because my work is all focused in on inclusion. So I was able to talk about International Women's Day in relation to my experience advocating for and promoting inclusion. And so these are the kind of trends I'm talking about. Look at what's out there in the zeitgeist. Look at what people are talking about and see how you can build on that, how you can take the work that you're doing and connect it in to those trends. So what is your hot take? International days are great for this sort of thing. In December, we'll have International Day of Persons with Disabilities. So that should be on everybody's calendar to be talking about how your work relates to disability rights and the empowerment of people with disabilities. But there are a whole host of international days where you're celebrating one group of people or one thing or the other. And so make pay attention to when those days roll around in your calendar because there's always an opportunity there to talk about what you're doing in relation to those days of celebration. And then research is also another hot topic to talk about when it comes to your thought leadership. This could be research that you as your organization have done. So maybe it's usability testing you've done on a product or a service. Maybe it's research you've done about the market for your work. Putting that research out there as part of your thought leadership is really, really valuable for your audience, for the people who care about your work the most. So it's really important that we think about what we're doing that could be considered research, that could be considered knowledge creation, and also look outside. What are other organizations, whether it's big multinational corporations or academics or research institutes, what are they doing in research that connects to what you're doing that you could make a comment about, that you could position yourself out there as a thought leader, that you would have a unique take. And then of course, this always scares people a little bit, but controversial opinions are incredibly valuable for showcasing your thought leadership. Now, I am not suggesting you put yourself in a position where you feel insecure or even unsafe with positioning yourself as a, as a, as a thought leader when it comes to controversial opinions. But what I am saying is that if there's some conventional wisdom that maybe your work kind of rubs up against or looks at it in a different angle, put yourself out there as knowing how to operate within, the, the, within that, uh, that connection. It's really important that we don't hide behind the safety of uh, kind of uh, ambiguity, but we position ourselves to say, hey, look, this is conventional wisdom, and here's how I've found everything is different than what we know and what we think we know. Again, if you guys have questions or anything like that, please do pop them into the q and I would love to answer questions as we're going through. Number four. Leverage awards and recognitions. If you've been working with your initiative for any length of time, it's likely that you've got some sort of recognition under your belt. Whether that's recognition from the media, whether that's a zero project award, 
or whether it's any other kind of title that might have come with a banner and a, you know any sort of flag or any sort of pin that you got that says you've achieved this, you've accomplished this. Using those awards, those recognitions, those, uh, those acknowledgements is really important to showcasing your value because it's external validation of what you have done. So we, you can go out and say, we've won the international award or the 2022 award for anything like that. Then it showcases that there's somebody else outside of your organization, outside of your initiative, who has been interested enough in your work that they put their thumbs up. They put their, yes, they did well. And you can, uh, you can look all over for these sorts of awards. You can search you know, awards and then specify your industry or your area that you're working. And you will find that there are plenty of opportunities that you have to apply for these awards and then see if you can pull off a win. There's also a ton of hackathons, innovation camps, competitions of all sorts that you can enroll yourself in, compete on your own or with a team there, this varies, but you can compete, and if you win, then you have that as a source of recognition. And that's what's so important around leveraging those awards and recognitions is being able to showcase to others what you have achieved. The last one is create engaging content. And I don't know about you, but when I first started creating content on social media, it was so intimidating. I was scared to death. I was simultaneously scared and kind of indifferent because I thought social media was all about taking pictures of your lunch and then posting them and then everybody commenting, oh, wow, that looks like a good lunch. What I learned over the years working in, uh, in content creation is that it's about connecting to your audience. And so I'm asking you to think about who is your audience? Where are they? What platforms are they using? Is it a professional audience that you want to connect with on LinkedIn? It is a younger audience that you want to connect with on TikTok. Or is it an audience that really enjoys nice pictures and videos that you could connect with on Instagram or YouTube? These are the sorts of audiences I want you to think about in your mind. How can you connect with them on different social media platforms? And it doesn't mean that you have to only, or it doesn't mean that you have to specify which kind of media you want to produce. So you can think of yourself in three ways. Do I want to produce text media, video, or pictures? And there are platforms that are appropriate for all three of those. And believe it or not, people still sign up for blogs and newsletters all day long. So if you're a writer, if you enjoy writing, maybe that's the channel you want to explore for creating engaging content. If you love being in front of the camera, if you can't get enough of turning your phone on and filming yourself, then maybe TikTok or YouTube is the right place for you to create content. And if you love just taking pictures of really cool stuff, again, you got platforms like Instagram or even Pinterest that you can use to position yourself and the value of the, of the work that you're doing. And when you're doing this sort of content creation, just be sure you're telling a story somehow. Give a narrative to what you're doing. Again, give a before and after, some emotional journey that you went through. And uh, if you can inject some humor into it, people love, even with serious topics, they love when things can still be funny and you can still make them laugh. So find ways of incorporating humor into what you're posting and then evaluate what's working, what doesn't. The great thing about social media is it gives you a ton of analytics. So you can always look at them and say, well, this post performed really well. This one didn't do so well. So creating engagement top, engaging content is the fifth uh, thing that you can do to showcase your value. So when I think about value proposition, uh, to put it in a business term, being able to showcase your value, I think of it as value position. You're positioning yourself as a leader who's creating value in the areas that you're working. And there are three really good reasons for taking this on board and integrating it into your daily practice. First of all, is you're gonna create rapport with your audience. What that means is that people are going to engage with you who have an interest in what you are doing. 
And that's really, really important for your business growth, for your growth of your initiative and your organization. Number two, it'll help you create a clear justification for why your work matters, why your work creates impact for really important groups of people like funders, clients, customers, investors, users, et cetera. So there's a lot of groups there that really matter to what you are doing. Being able to articulate your company and your organization's value helps you connect with them, helps you influence them and justify why you are doing something valuable. And the third reason, presenting your work at ZeroCon 2025. I'm gonna have a link for you guys at the end of this presentation, but presenting your work at conferences, especially large international conferences like Zero Conference, uh, the Zero Project Conference is absolutely critical for being able to show what you're doing to different groups of people and showcasing why it matters. So I wanna talk a little bit as we're wrapping up here about the Zero Project Scaling Solutions Program. This is all about showcasing ways that you can take your business model, your organization model, your initiative, and bring it to new and different markets around the world. And we know that startups struggle. And I don't care if I'm talking about a startup in terms of, a, again, a social enterprise or a nonprofit or a for-profit company. All of these are kind of startups, quote unquote. We know that 90% of them fail. And the failure occurs along the line of commercialization. So basically, this means that you've got an idea, you've tested it, you've tried it out. Now you're trying to bring it to the new markets around the world. And that's where that dip in failure happens. That's when people run out of gas and they lose, their, uh, they lose the company, they lose their work. And we think that the cause is that they're just not given enough guidance and support. And so there's a whole bunch of incubator programs and accelerator programs and innovation camps and everything else that you could imagine, business development programs that are geared for providing support and guidance to entrepreneurs and to innovators. Scaling Solutions takes a very different perspective to that work because we think the actual cause why these initiatives stop growing is because founders just give up. They just lose steam, they lose the motivation, they pivot into an entirely different industry or field, they go do many, many different things, but they just give up on what they're doing. And so what we have found is the solution to dealing with this disconnect, this commercialization gap, this 90% fail rate, is to both develop the person and the business. So scaling solutions doesn't just focus on the business development side of things, we also focus on the human development side of things. And what that means is more or less what we've been talking about today. How do we position you as a, uh, uh, the leader, someone who can showcase the value of your organization, the value of your work? And we know that business success is all about marketing. And so we integrate a lot of marketing material into our work together. We know that it's about financing and acquiring funding. And we know that it's all about client and customer service. So we haven't lost sight of these important business aspects. But what we've done is we've integrated into those business aspects some key issues on personal development and personal success, starting off with number one, leadership. So giving you the capacity and the competencies you need to lead your initiative effectively. Number two, and this is something that's very novel in leadership circles, but this is having empathy. And I'm sure everyone on this webinar has a high capacity for empathy. And it's also something that we can continue to develop no matter how high our capacity for empathy is. And number three, having a clear vision. This comes back to showcasing your value, having a clear vision for what your work will be in the future, where you want to be in the coming years is critical for your personal success. And it's something that Scaling Solutions has invested resources into making it happen. Now, Scaling Solutions is run by my company, Inclusive Creation. We're a Norwegian uh, IT company. I think we could still call ourselves a startup. We've, we've only been around for about three years. Uh, 
Uh, but we're focused in on all these aspects of inclusion, leadership, uh, inclusive design, universal design, social innovation, and things like that. And I mentioned before, I have a really amazing team. Um, our project manager and uh, and just extraordinary human being, Regant, is uh, taking a very strong foundational focus on making sure the operations of the program run smoothly. We have Anne, my uh, co-founder of Inclusive Creation, who handles a lot of the back office things to make sure that Regant and I can stand up and lead this thing really, really effectively. And we know that the that disability innovations have been critical over the years to moving society forward. These are just a few examples. The keyboard was originally invented for someone with a disability. And of course, now everybody uses a keyboard. The typewriter, which was also part of the keyboard's development, was also invented for people with disabilities and is now used almost by everyone. Speech to text technology and text to speech technology, both developed for persons with disabilities and now you being used in smart speakers and everything else and voice assistants. And of course, audiobooks. Audiobooks originally developed for people with disabilities, and now we have millions of people around the world who read by listening. Zero Project Scaling Solutions is, has a very unique place in the market because we combine, we use disability innovations to combine advocacy with knowledge sharing, with research and development, and with innovation. So we're able to bring these four clusters together to take a cohort of fellows and amplify their voices to extend their work to other countries around the world. And this isn't just about uh, the, 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 the work that we do within the initiative, it's also about bringing that to other places. And so we help commercialize and scale your initiatives, your work by exploiting new op market opportunities, by helping you create more efficient operations, by helping you grow and expand and help you further develop your business model. One of the success stories of last year's program, uh, I think, was an organization in Latin America who was originally focused exclusively on government funding. Their whole reason for existing was that the government was giving them money to run an inclusive education program. And by the time they finished Scaling Solutions, they realized that there was a huge market, a for-profit market for their work that they could use to get some independence from that government funding. And so they could run the for-profit line alongside a non-profit line and integrate these two pieces of work together to create a more sustainable initiative over time. So they weren't reliant on the annual funding and the changes in political uh, uh, political priorities. And the, the program for Scaling Solutions is a customized program. It's a one-size-fits-one program. It is not one-size-fits-all. So when I'm talking about this program, it's not just a generic business development program that any organization could join. This is something specifically tailored for disability innovations. It's personalized. It's customized. It's all about creating insights and empowerment for your work and your organization. And what this does is it helps you minimize the risk that your initiative will fall into this valley of death for a lot of startups. It'll help you maintain the momentum that you've already created with your initiative, and it'll help maximize any possible impact that you may create in your work. Now, you might be thinking, Anthony, hold on a second. Scaling Solutions sounds fine. However, it's risky. You're asking me to put in a lot of time and effort to be part of this program. This is going to be a huge drain on our resources, and you're absolutely right. The work that you do within the program does take your investment. It takes your energy. It takes your attention. It takes your time. And the program pays off. Last year, we brought 12 Scaling Solutions Fellows into the program, and we were able to amplify their voices throughout the world, not just within the scope of Zero Project, but within the scope of all of our network partners. And this year, we're going to take on 15 new fellows, and I'm really excited about that uh, later on this year. 
And our program was created by experts and it was created by a community of startups. So if you have an initiative that you want to grow, rest assured that the program we've created has been, has been developed in conjunction and in collaboration with people like you. So it is tailored for your needs. It is what we call founder centric. So we have rewards and giveaways throughout the program to help you develop your initiative. We value lived experiences. So we know the importance of the lived experience of a person with disability and why that matters with disability innovations. We work with mentors and reverse mentors. And what that means is you'll not only get mentors from a top down perspective, but you'll get mentors from a bottom up perspective. And then we really emphasize peer and alumni support. And we are, ra we are uh, rapidly putting together an alumni program for the graduates of the program last year, and they will be part of the journey of the new 15 fellows we bring in this year. Our program is also business centric. So you will get go-to-market strategies. You'll get a very unique set of tools that will help you develop your work and you'll get funding or you'll get uh, uh, support for acquiring funding and uh, legal advice. Our work is also network centric. So we have five really amazing partners that we work with to bring your work to the world. We work with GIZ, which is a government agency in Germany that does a lot of work in international development across Africa, Southeast Asia and Latin America. We have Atos, which is a tech firm based in, in the UK. They do so much great work with accessible technologies, and they have a lot of great minds who work at that company that provide support to our program. We have Fundacion Descubreme in Latin America and Chile, who does a lot of great work with business development and developing disability innovations. And of course, we have Zero Project, which is a consists of thousands and thousands of partners around the world that can provide support. And then we lastly, we just uh, added on a fifth partner this year, Enable India, who are doing great work to advocate for persons with disabilities in India. And that market for disability innovations is incredible. There is so much opportunity there. So with these, these partners, the networks that they bring, it gives us a chance to take what you're doing and bring it to the world. The program is divided up into six sessions. So you'll get a session every week, starting off with a masterclass on value proposition. All this masterclass is about is taking what we've started talking about today and moving it forward, moving it one step further. So you get templates and, and, uh, and frameworks for how to do that. The next thing we talk about in the session is our KPI workshop. Now you might be bored to death of KPIs. I know I am. Every time we get a fund funding from the government, they want to see all these KPIs and it's just the worst part of my job I feel. But this is a new take on KPIs. This is a way of using KPIs to showcase your work and to convince funders, to convince investors that what you're doing matters. Then we have a whole session on impact and funding, how to maximize your opportunities for both. We have a whole session on networking and how to leverage your network to expand your uh, initiatives. We have a whole session on media, how to uh, work with journalists and media outlets whether it's new media, podcasts and social media, or old media, newspapers and news outlets on TV. We have a whole session and we wrap it up with a session on deal making mastery. So these are all the techniques I've learned over the course of my work as an entrepreneur and how we can take uh, connections that we've made and turn them into revenue channels. Each session is broken up into two pieces. So you'll get one piece that'll be for everybody in the program, and then you'll get a second piece that is dialed in to the specific interests of your working group. And we divide each cohort up into three separate working groups. We divide them up into the vision vanguards, which is all about the folks who are working on their go-to market strategies. Then we have the global pioneers. These are the folks that are working actively on taking their work and moving it into another market uh, internationally. 
And then we have the niche navigators. These are the folks that have a very, 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 very niche initiative that are trying to find ways of pivoting and bringing it into a more mainstream piece of work. So each session deals with a, a high level topic for all of the uh, Scaling Solutions Fellows and then a working group topic that each of the working groups will, will, will uh, work on. And in Scaling Solutions, we have a mantra. And I feel like this is a really important part of what we do because it gives us a sense of purpose, a sense of community. It gives us a, a sort of guiding light that we use to say, this is what we all agree on. And so we start that uh, mantra with, it will be messy, we will trust the process. And it goes into working on relationships first and everything else second. Innovators and entrepreneurs get really wrapped up into the work and it's justifiable because you care about what you do so, so much. But what we say at Scaling Solutions is that that should never eclipse the relationships that you have with your community, with your family, with your friends, with your business associates, clients, customers, and everyone else. Those relationships always come first. The third piece of our mantra is feel your feelings and be kind to yourself. This is all about cultivating empathy within and, uh, and externally. So being able to empathize with yourself and with others. And the last piece of our uh, mantra is being open to new ways of working and thinking. And I hope today's session has opened you to new ways of working and thinking when it comes to showcasing your value. Scaling Solutions is all about new ways of working, new ways of thinking. We have quite a, a comprehensive timeline as so we run the sessions in the second half of the year. Um, in the first half of next year, we run some uh, wrapping up, networking, strategizing, and then into the Zero Project Conference of 2025. And then from there, uh, the next cohort will become alumni, and then we'll have a whole separate alumni program for them. So we're really excited about having that as an opportunity. I have some re reflection questions here. I would love to see some input from the from the, uh, the attendees here. If you are able to put into the chat or ask questions now, it would be really nice to get your insights, uh, to get your uh, to get your input on whether or not this sort of work is uh, is helpful for you and your initiative. Um, does it fit in with your priorities, and is it relevant for what you are doing? We'll just take a few more minutes and give everybody a chance to respond. This helps us tailor these webinars to your needs. This helps us kind of identify what we can do to better serve and support your work, uh, which is what this is all about anyways. I see we got the majority of folks who have already responded. If you're going to respond to the poll, I would appreciate it if you'd go ahead and enter your input now, and we'll wrap it up in the next four minutes. Please take another 30 seconds to input your responses to the poll, and we will move on. All right, while the rest of you are continuing to respond, we will move on to the next, the, the wrap up here. Um, scaling is an opportunity. And what that means is that it can come too early or it can come too late. Scaling is one of those just-in-time opportunities. So you have to ask yourself, is this the opportunity that's right for me at this time in my initiative? If you try to scale too quickly, before your ideas have been validated, before you've had a chance to build out what might be called a minimum viable product, before you've had a chance to really take your idea and make it a reality, that may be too early to start thinking about scaling. Now, if you've already done those things, that's the right opportunity. That's the right chance to take your work into the future. So I would ask everyone uh, who's attending this webinar to please sign up for the Zero Call 2025. This is the call for nominations for the Zero Project. This is your chance to showcase your innovative potential. This is also your chance to begin the application process towards scaling solutions. So grab this QR code if you can, and it'll take you to a website where you can sign up 
Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded, so everyone will get access to the recording afterwards. So if you missed the QR code, don't fret. All is well. You will have that later. And then I promised I would give you more information about Zero Project Latin America. So in May, we are going to have a Zero Project conference in Latin America, in Chile, which is going to be really, really, really exciting because it's a chance for us to take Zero Project, the ideas, the values, the mission of Zero Project, and bring it to the Latin America market, to the Latin America audiences. So this is going to be super, super fun. If you can make it, I would love it if you would attend. Uh, it will be a really, really great opportunity for you to connect with like-minded individuals who are doing really, really great work in this field. So grab this QR code while you can. The rest of the information is on the slide. And again, the webinar is being recorded, so you'll get the copy of the recording after we complete this. And lastly, but certainly not least, we got one minute less left. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or any ideas that you want to share with me, grab this QR code. This takes you to all of my social media. You can connect with me, ask me questions about scaling solutions, about disability innovations, or about the creating value for your company. And uh, I will be happy to, to strike up a dialogue, strike up a discussion with you. With that, we are right on 1500, which is the exact minute that we were supposed to end. I will say thank you all for your attention, for the time you've uh, dedicated to being part of this webinar. We're going to have three more webinars like this, um, three different topics. I'll be talking about scaling solutions in each one, but the first topic will be different for each one. So I hope that you'll sign up for them as well, and I hope to see you all then. Have a wonderful day, and thank you again for all of your attention and all of your support. And thank you to the sign language interpreters and to the Spanish language interpreters. I'm so sorry that I didn't say that sooner. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are amazing. Really, really appreciate it.